Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are most welcome here. And today I wanted to see if I could make one of those little fall topiaries from Dollar Tree products. And I also wanted to see if I could make one that was sort of coastal and fall at the same time. Let's go have some fun. To start, we're going to use one of these foam carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. This one that I'm using is white, but you don't have to use a white one. This year they come in white, orange, and black. The white is going to be easiest though, because we are going to paint it an off-white. Now these are two pieces that are joined together in the middle, so it does have this sort of unsightly seam in the middle. And I thought I would try to caulk that. So I'm just applying some caulk to the middle of the pumpkin. and. One application of caulk did not seem to really fill that in as much as I wish it had. And in some places, it wasn't really so much that there was a seam, but that the pumpkin sort of um, just wasn't really aligned perfectly. So I guess do your best at this part and maybe work a little harder at it than I did. Now, once that has dried and the caulk that I used takes two hours to dry, we're going to Mod Podge the entire foam pumpkin. You won't have to Mod Podge the other little pumpkins that we're going to use because they already have a finish on them, but these carvable pumpkins don't. And I think that the stems used to be attached with some sort of toothpick or something, but now they're just molded as part of the pumpkin. And of course we don't want the stem because we're going to be putting another pumpkin or gourd on top. So I'm just using a box cutter knife to cut that stem off. And then I'm just going to cover the entire pumpkin in a coat of matte Mod Podge. This is to make it easier to paint. And I just use a bamboo skewer in the hole that I cut where the stem was to hold it while I was Mod Podging the bottom of it or the top of it. And then to stick it in a cardboard box so that I could do this just in one go and not have to do the top and then the bottom separately. Now, I tried to pick gourds that would give me a nice topiary shape. And so the middle gourd is one of these gourds at the Dollar Tree that has some leaves and berries and other things on top. And I found that that was actually a little bit difficult to remove. One piece was just sort of stuck in, but another piece was glued on. So I would just say, do your best to remove that without pulling up too much of the pumpkin itself. And then the other little pumpkin or gourd is just a slightly smaller little white one that I found. But again, we are going to be painting these, so the colors aren't super important. Now I want to make some sort of base, and then I'm going to put the pumpkin on top of the base, or the entire topiary on top of the base. And what I'm using here are some of the larger craft sticks. I'm going to use some bamboo skewers, and I'm going to use these squares, and they're about four and a half inches square, and they come in a pack of, I want to say six, at the Dollar Tree. Now, you could do this entirely with the craft sticks, or you could do this entirely with the pieces of wood, but I wanted something that looked like, well, at first, I was thinking sort of a clabbered effect. And then I changed my mind, and I took apart what I had, and I decided I wanted a beadboard effect. So when I was thinking clabbered effect, I was going to use six popsicle sticks. So I was going to have two sides. I'm not really making a box. I'm making a box without a top and a bottom. We're going to use something else for the top, and it's not going to have a bottom. But I thought two of the sides would be the pieces of wood, and two of the sides would be made up of these craft sticks, looking sort of like clabbards. So the first thing I did was just cut them so that they would roughly make a square. So cut them basically the same size as the pieces of wood. But of course something has to be on the inside and something has to be on the outside. So you could make them slightly larger if you really wanted to make a true square. I did not think that was very important. And so these are very easy to cut. I just have some shears here. After cutting them I did sand all of the edges. So I cut 12 total six for each side. And then I glued the whole thing together with wood glue and just sort of held it together with tape while it was drying. Now for the top, which is the platform that our topiary is going to rest on, I chose this oval sign from the Dollar Tree. I was actually looking for another piece, but my local Dollar Tree didn't have it because I think they do have wood plaques 
and those are a little thicker, but this worked out just fine, this sign. The only issue with it is that it does have these holes where the hangers were, I took the hanger off. And so I'm just gonna put a little tape on the back and fill that in with a little bit of spackle. Now for the pumpkins or pumpkins and gourds, I decided that I liked the color of that small one. It's just a little bit off white. So I took a white acrylic paint. I have one by Apple Barrel and just a tiny dot of yellow. The yellow that I have is from the Dollar Tree and mixed that up to get an off white color. And I then mixed in some baking soda to get a little bit of texture so that all of our pumpkins or gourds will have the same color paint and the same texture. Because this is a little bit thick, I used it to try to fill in a little bit more those cracks that I had filled in with the caulk previously. Now here's the base where I've already pulled off one side. So you can sort of get an idea of what I had constructed. I had put those pieces of craft stick horizontally across two of the ends. And again, I decided I would rather have something that looks more like beadboard. And I would recommend wood glue. but. What I decided to use was hot glue and some duct tape. So what I did was I cut the bamboo skewers the same length, and because this is going to add a little bit of width, I scaled it down to five of the craft sticks with the bamboo skewers between. Now, if I were doing this again, I would put bamboo skewers in each corner of this piece, and I didn't think to do that when I was constructing it. But so I did just put those together and then glue them with the hot glue to just sort of hold them in place temporarily. And this is the back because this is where they were glued before. You can see a little bit of that leftover wood glue on the top and bottom from where they were glued to this before. So I just glued them and then put a couple of pieces of duct tape across the back and then put that last piece of craft stick that I didn't use diagonally across the back to give it some strength. One of them was a little bit skewed, so I just cut that and, and made it even with my little saw and my little box cutter knife. And then I assembled it together, again with hot glue, using tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. You could use any kind of block on the inside. This is not the greatest construction. I will be the first to admit that. But I didn't think this had to be particularly strong. It's just a decorative piece. And the piece on top is also going to somewhat hold it together. So I did just use hot glue and those tower blocks to glue the whole thing together. But again, if you're making this, I would highly recommend putting some pieces of bamboo skewer on each corner to give it a nice finish. I then glued that oval sign to the top, and again, I am just using hot glue. Now, I considered a number of different finishes for this, and I think what we choose to use to sort of embellish our topiary will make the color that we choose work or not work. So for example, if we choose white for this bottom piece, then we're going to really need to break that up um, on the top. And if we choose blue, then I really can't use the blue leaves that I want to use on top of that because that will be too much blue at the bottom, I think. What I ultimately decided to do was an effect that would look something like some of the palette wood that I have. So I have some nice aged palette wood, and I thought I would like to make this look like that. So I started with this apple barrel gray paint. The color is granite. It's a light gray. And I watered that down quite a lot and brushed that over the entire support piece, our entire base. Now you can see the piece of palette wood here and it's got brown markings or dark gray markings on it. And then it's got a sort of a light brown color mostly. So what I'm going to do next is take my burnt umber paint, which is a brown, and just make some brown marks all over the base as randomly as I can, but also in places where I think that maybe it would accumulate a little bit of age or grime. So up at the top where the pieces are joined, for example. So then what I did was watered down the brown paint with a lot of water and brushed that lightly over the entire piece, but not carefully. So I didn't intentionally leave large areas open and gray, but where I left a little bit open and gray, I left it. So I want a little of the gray to show through, but mostly I want it to be this light brown color. And so what we're going to get is some little bits of gray 
and we're going to get that darker brown showing through as well. And I think it is a pretty good match for the palette wood that I have, so I think it does give it an authentic aged used look. Now I just absolutely love these blue maple leaves from the Dollar Tree. I think that it is just such a beautiful color and, and there's actually several colors in there. Some of them are lighter blue and some of them have a little bit more green in them. But what I generally do with foliage is I do generally iron it because they can get very crinkled and um, they're, they're not bent in a natural looking way. So I do like to iron them and I iron them on a very low setting, somewhere down around silk. So I'm first just going to cut the leaves apart and I'm using some wire snips to do that because I think there is wire in the stem. The other parts that attach the leaves are just plastic, so I'll use scissors eventually to cut off each of the leaves separately. And then I'm just, just going to iron all of them. It just takes about 10 seconds a leaf. Now as I mentioned, I had originally wanted a thicker piece for the top, so what I'm going to do is take some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree in white, and I'm just going to put that around the edge of this. So I'm going to cut a piece that's maybe a tiny bit shorter than we would want to go all the way around because it is stretchy. And then I am going to tape with a little bit of masking tape the ends of that together and then do a technique over that called whipping, which is generally used to um, sort of tie off the end of a piece of rope so it doesn't fray. So I'm going to whip the two pieces together around the masking tape and I'll include a link here to a video in which I go through that whipping technique pretty slowly. And I'm using some string from, I don't know if it's the home improvement or hardware section of Dollar Tree. And now I'm just going to glue that on. So it's a pretty good fit. It stays on without glue because it was a little small and it's stretchy so I could sort of stretch it over but it's going to stay on a lot better with glue so I'm just going to go around the edge and hot glue that on. And then I'm going to arrange the leaves on top and hot glue those on. So I'll start with the larger leaves and put those around and then layer the smaller leaves on top. And then what I'm thinking is maybe putting some pearls around because this is a coastal topiary. So I thought pearls coming from the sea would be a nice coastal addition where if we were doing something maybe more rustic, we might use berries or acorns. I thought for coastal that pearls made sense and they fit with our color palette. So before I do the pearls though, I'm going to glue down the three pumpkins or gourds. And then I thought some of this Dollar Tree nautical rope in the brown or, or jute color would look really good around the topiaries. So I think around the bottom and between each of the gourds. So what I did was I cut those and I whipped each end and then glued it to the, the seam there in between the two gourds. And whipping the ends just gives you a nice neat area where the two ends join together. So with that all done, I then just tried to be as sort of random as I could, but make a pleasing pattern with the pearls around the topiary. And I tried to vary the size of the pearls, and I did put some smaller pearls out on closer to the ends of the leaves with larger pearls closer to the bottom pumpkin. And here's what it looks like. So what do you think? Did I achieve a sort of fusion between fall and coastal? I'd love to know your thoughts. So what did you think of our fall coastal pumpkin topiary? I had a lot of fun making it, and I had trouble making some of the decisions that I made, such as using the nautical rope, using the pearls, painting it this sort of gray color. I considered a white, I considered a blue, I considered doing something like a crackle effect. So I'd be really interested in your thoughts. Would you have done it differently? Would you have done something that I didn't suggest here? If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoy this sort of content and I should bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.